Hello and welcome back to Ask Warble. We're here with Chris Hello. today. Hey Chris. How are you doing? I'm good. good. Um, we're going to be talking about bands. This awesome. is your thing. This we're is awesome. about music, live music, all that it entails and how it can enhance your day, whether it's for your wedding, your birthday celebration, whatever event you're having. These are the things that you need to know, so listen up. Uh, first, Chris, a uh, pretty important question. A lot of the fees that are kind of listed on the site um, kind of give give a nice, you know, idea of what the band's going to yeah. cost on the day. Uh, when someone calls up, is there ever any movement on the fee that they see on there? Yeah, I mean, the fees that we put on the sites, they are guide prices, and we do try and stress that as much as possible uh, sure. because there are so many different factors that do go into constructing the quotes for clients. Like, like what would that be? Um, so the main factors um, are going to be the time of year, you know, the day, of the week. All these kind of things can have a big impact. Um, traditionally, Fridays and Saturdays are going to be a bit, you know, bit more to the guide price that you'll see, whereas weekdays might be a little bit cheaper. Oh, so um, if you did want to save a little bit of money and you, you could afford to actually have something on a Wednesday or a Thursday, yeah. for example, that would be a way of, of doing it maybe. Yeah, definitely. If you work into a budget, that's definitely something that can you know save a lot of, of the cost because the thing is with weekdays, they're traditionally a little bit quieter in terms of popularity for the sure. bands. Um, so it's in their best interest to get those dates filled. They want to be working every day of the week. So what they'll do as an incentive, they can reduce their fees for those days to make okay. sure that they're getting the bookings in. So like a, a weekend mid-July is going to be a super busy date where they're probably going to have a lot of inquiries and they'll yeah. have that booked in, whereas maybe like a weekday in October or something like that would yeah. be a little bit less busy and something they can afford to kind of drop a bit down. Yeah, on. those are definitely the days that you should be negotiating on because, you know, with the Fridays and Saturdays, they're going to be getting so many inquiries through. They're going to be easy to be able to get booked elsewhere for the full fee that they need. Um, because Fridays and Saturdays are so popular, any other day in the week, it's going to be a bit quieter. They're not going to be getting as many inquiries through. Sure. Um, so at that point, if you do receive a quote and it's coming in a little bit over the budget, you know, let, let your agent know and we can always have a chat with the band and see what we can do for you then. Awesome. So on the fees, sometimes it might not be the case that they can you know, have any movement on the fee, but is there any kind of additional extras or things that they can add to maybe sweeten the deal. I know some bands offer like DJ sets and things like that. Yeah, a DJ set is, is a really good one. Um, you know, the, the most important thing is obviously getting value for money. Um, you know, it's a big expense. It's one of the biggest expenses for the day is getting the right band. So with our bands, they do want to make sure they cover everything. Um, so if it's a case of you're finding it hard to maybe justify the fee, um, the most important thing to realize is the band are going to take care of everything. Um, okay. So DJ services, uh, you know, the sets that they do during the evening, those are all things that are going to be sort of incorporated to make it the best possible sort of experience for so you. So it's almost like a big kind of entertainment like package that yeah. you're getting so you're not like left with any kind of like a uh, dull space or time on the night they've basically got everything covered that you'll need yeah definitely it's um it's one of the most kind of important things to, to think about really because we get it all the time um you know customers are coming to us and they're saying um you know it's only two hours of music you know what's going to happen you know the rest of the time yeah i mean but, they're right to be kind of worried about yeah. that in a sense you know because but yeah. you know if you if you stress the point that it is more than just the two hours. It's everything in between as well. So it's all the, sure. it's, it's the DJ service, it's the playlist. They're just going to make sure that the party is going on all it night. Keeps basically. going. Yeah. Okay. Well, wh whilst we're on the point of the the DJ services, then what what does an actual band DJ include on the night? Sure. Um, Often it can depend on the band. Um, Ninety percent, I would say, of the bands that we have, their DJ service is going to be more of a laptop service. So what that means, it's a pre-mixed playlist. Um, so it's not necessarily one of the band members standing there with sort of DJ decks, decks and, and, and all giving out. shout outs and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, quite often, what it'll be is a pre-mixed playlist that the you know the, the customers they will have an input in that. Um, cool. So that's normally done before the day, about three weeks before the bands will give you a call. They'll say, you know, what kind of songs do you want to have included? What kind of music do you guys like? Um, they will then construct that playlist before the day. And then normally it's a laptop or an iPad um, that they'll plug in through their PA system. Um, and all the, all the tracks are blended together, you know, like a traditional DJ would. But the main difference is that it's not going to be a manned service. It is going to be, you know, sure. a pre-mixed service that they offer. I suppose after watching the band for two hours, 
you might not be up for an actual proper full on DJ set yeah. with someone manned and then the shout out. So it it probably fits a little bit nicer, doesn't it? Just having some, some yeah. Music there. The the most important thing that that I feel when you you are considering this kind of approach is that when you book a band for your evening entertainment, you're normally booking a band because of a specific style or a specific thing about that band in terms mm. of their music that you really enjoy. Yeah. Um. Often, if you do have a separate DJ what you don't want is to have the, the music choices conflicting on the night. So yeah. if, if you have, for example, say you have a soul band booked, you know, if you have a soul band, they're going to be playing a lot of kind of soul classics. They'll do, you know, some, you know, modern and chart stuff as well. But then what you don't want to happen is to have a DJ that's going to come along and play music in between that is just completely different. Yeah. So having the band take care of everything, it makes everything sound a bit more cohesive on the night. So, oh, true, yeah. you know, having a DJ service provided by the band, it basically makes sure that you're going to have music based on the choice that you made when you made that band. So it's going to be music that you probably are quite interested yeah, in. Yeah, anyway. that's super important. I mean, I don't know whether you have as well, but I've played uh, gigs in the past with bands where, like, the DJ we've turned up and we've never met before. Yeah. And they'll already have their playlist sorted on the night. Yeah. And it can be a very kind of a strange mix of music yeah. and it works so much better if sometimes if you can have that theme running through or if your DJ can communicate with, with yeah. your band at all. It's really important because although we will try our hardest to put acts in touch with each other in the run up it's not always possible, you know. If it's a case of you've booked a DJ through ourselves and a band through ourselves, then sometimes, you know, it's a little bit easier because we will have a rapport with both acts. Sure. Yeah. Um, but if you're booking a DJ externally there's no guarantee that that act will be able to have a conversation with the band beforehand. So, like you were saying, um, you know, it, it can be sometimes a little bit tricky to, to sort of yeah. get them to, to sort of have that conversation about the music choices. So, having a band do everything, it's just one less thing to worry about. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned the fact that with, with a band DJ set, you can kind of give an input about what yeah. you want to hear on the night. Would you say that's a good opportunity to get a lot of your song choices across? Because I know that a lot of the bands will do maybe like first dance requests or yeah. take a couple requests, but there might be some songs that the band can't play for whatever reason. It might not suit their lineup or their style. Yeah. So do you think that's the place in where you really can kind of like put in some of the properly requested songs that you surely want yeah. to Yeah, I mean, time is very much a limiting factor for bands. Um, you know, over the summer months, they're going to be doing so many bookings every week that there's just not enough time in their schedule to be able to learn song after song after song. Yeah. Um, they will obviously do the first dance song, like you said, and they might be open to doing, you know, one or two other requests depending on the schedule. Um, but, you know, if, if you have a load of songs that you want to have included, um, that aren't necessarily songs that you can see on the band's repertoire, then that's the perfect opportunity to have them included because the DJ service is there basically f to facilitate that. Okay. Um, awesome. Normally what we would recommend is having a roughly a list of 20 songs that you want to have included. Um, if you send those to the band at the three-week call, it's it's easy for them. They'll just pop that straight off the yeah. playlist yeah. and then you're getting the music that you want to listen to. Awesome. And it means you're not interrupting the... The band's kind of flow and that time they've like taken to tailor their set properly yeah. and learn everything because it's kind of a refined art, you know. Definitely, so yeah. You, you can kind of stay away from that. Awesome. Okay. Uh, talking of bands, bands need somewhere to set up. They need some yeah. space. They might need a stage or some floor space. How much would ideally, you know, a band actually need? Sure. This is, again, it's something that's a, a little bit flexible. Um, it more often depends on the band. Um, you kind of have to be able to visualise it in terms of, of the band that you book. You know, for example, a three-piece rock and pop band it is going to require a little bit less space than, you know, a six, seven or eight-piece soul band. Um, cool. Ideally, what we would say uh, for kind of most bands... Roughly five by four meters is kind of what you want to be looking at. Okay. Um, if a venue can provide that space, you're not going to have any problems. It's going to be really straightforward for them to sure. set up. Um, we always say it's flexible because the shape of the room and that kind of thing can you know, have an impact on that. So if it is a slightly okay. smaller space, it's not always a massive problem. Um, but if you can let us know as soon as you can just regarding the space that the venue have got, we can double check with the band straight away and sort of can get their fit? experience yeah. and you know, make sure that it's going to be suitable for them. Okay, what about things maybe like plug points and stuff at the venue, maybe just to ensure that at that space they have enough kind of power to, yeah. to run their gear in that? That's one of the, the very much the most important thing when sort of kind of thinking where the band's going to set up and in terms of, of allocating the space for them. Sure. Um, having access to power near the performance area is one of the most important factors. Because you ain't going to have any music without exactly. it, unless they're unplugged, but yeah, it'll be tricky. <laughs> exactly, and you know, although the band will provide 
kind of extension cables and that kind of stuff so they can route their own power. They will need, you know, a central point where they can plug that in. Um, you don't want wires running all the way across yeah. your, your dance It makes it difficult to dance. Yeah. So it's, um, it's definitely something that, you know, if you can get everything as kind of compact as you can to the actual performance base, it just means the setup process is going to be, you know, one a lot safer for, for kind of guests. Um, and it's also going to be easier for the band. They'll be able to set up a lot smoother. It's smoother, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, when the bands turn up on the day, what do they need? What do we need to provide for them to make sure that they can execute a flawless performance? Sure. Well, it's really important, especially with weddings, you know, by the time the band arrive, the day is in full swing. You know, everyone yeah. is, is normally kind of either, either mingling in a drink reception or, you know, everyone sat down and had a lot has happened breakfast. up to that point. Yeah, you know? definitely. And, you know, what the band want is they want to be able to arrive and they don't want to feel like they're in the way, pretty much. Yeah. Um, you know, it can be, you know, quite intimidating sometimes for bands if it's a massive room of people, they don't want to necessarily know who they're going to be speaking to. Um, so what we always advise is kind of providing an area for the band that they can just go and chill out in just prior to their kind of setup and their performance. Performance. Yeah. Um, what they don't want to do is they don't want to feel like they're, you know, in interrupting the sort of proceedings for the day. Yeah. You know, obviously they want to be respectful. So the most important thing is making sure that they've got an area where they can, you know, set up their, their instruments, that they can, you know, sort of chill out, maybe have a drink or something to eat sort of before the set. Right. Um, and then another important thing to, you know, sort of touch upon with that as well um, you know we always put in our in our contracts that the food and drink is to be provided for bands um, wherever possible if that is able to be provided it just goes a long way to sort of helping them make sure that they're fully prepared for the set then yeah it's in, I guess it's in your best interest right yeah. to, to kind of fuel them up yeah. for, the, for the gig to come because yeah. if they're you know fed and watered properly and you know they're feeling 100% they're going to give 100% yeah, on definitely. the night so. you know when, when you've invested so much into a band you want to get the very best out of them that you can on the night totally um, and we always say you know if you look after the band the band are going to look after you and that is you know that's the, the bottom line of it really it's, sure. it, it's very much a case of, of the bands they'll have been in every possible situation when it comes to weddings you know they've got loads and loads of experience so they'll be happy to accommodate you know whatever you can provide awesome. um you know that's what we designed the three-week call for so they can have that chat and build that bit of rapport before yeah. the day um so at least then if they do turn up and they have you know a point of contact on the day that they can go and speak to even if it's someone from the venue you know it just it makes means, things a bit easier doesn't yeah, it just exactly go through um do do they need to uh, provide somewhere for them to park park their vehicles yeah parking is, is really important um I guess not just parking, but kind of accessible parking. Is that yeah, right? that that's pretty much the kind of crux of it. Really, it is the accessibility for the venue that is the most important thing. Um, we understand that sometimes it's not always possible for bands to be able to park at the venue, um, especially venues that are kind of in like you know city centre locations where they might not necessarily yeah, have sure. some dedicated parking. Um, what we can always advise is if you do feel the parking is going to be an issue at the venue. As long as the band can, you know, have a point where they can load their instrument in. So if it's a case of, you know, parking up just to load in all their equipment, and then they can yeah. then sort of move to another parking, you know, location if they need to. Sure. Um, but having everything sort of on site, it just means that they can, you know, one load their equipment in quicker and set up quicker. You know, if they're having to set all their equipment up and then have to worry about kind of moving all their sort of vehicles and stuff. Yeah. Um, it can make it a little bit more tricky. So it's definitely something to to sort of provide if your venue can. Awesome, okay. Uh, talking of setting up and things, uh, you know, the band are going to be having a lot of gear that they bring in. Is uh, their sound and lighting part of that gear or is it just their instruments that they bring? Yeah, so we always provide PA equipment with, with all of our bands. and It's an all-inclusive price, so it includes all the equipment and it, in the vast majority of cases it does include lighting equipment as well. Um, so you're not hiring a band and then thinking oh I've got to hire a PA as well I yeah. know I've got a highlighting if you get the band you're going to have most of the time you're going to have those three things yeah together. the only the only thing that you need to consider when you know, making these kind of decisions is mainly the size of the room and the number of guests that you've got um, right. that has a big impact on the size of the PA that the band are going to need sure yeah because some would cater for like maybe massive venues yeah. so if, say if you're like a festival or something like yeah. that they're going to have like a hefty piece of kit yeah I mean PA that. equipment you know PA systems they all come in, in different shapes and sizes it, it all depends on the specific requirements for that particular you know system that the band have 
we always sort of advise that the band's PA systems, they're going to be fine between around 150 to 200 people. And um, that is the, the sort of size of most traditional weddings. Yeah. You're not going to need much more than that. But if you're a really popular yeah. guy or gal and you've got lots of guests, yeah. then, you know, give, give us a heads up. Give us a heads up, definitely. Um, it's not a case of what you see is what you get with the PA system. It's not a case of this is all that they can provide. If we can have enough notice, the band can always source, you know, additional speakers, totally. um, you know, additional bits of equipment that they can always add on to their, you know, standard rig to make sure that they're going to be able to, you know, cope with the size of the room that, that you guys have there. Awesome. Okay. Um, with setting up then, it, as you said, um, the, the, in the best interest of the band, they don't want to disrupt yeah. the day. Um, can the band set up at a different time so they're not like kind of going through the flow of everyone's mixing up, maybe like arrive a little bit earlier and set up then? Yeah, early arrival is, is always a recommended thing that we would suggest, especially if your timings are pretty tight in regards to, you know, your wedding breakfast and the evening reception, or in a situation where your wedding breakfast is happening in the same room as where your evening reception is going to take right. place. Because um, yeah, you might be in the middle of something and you hear the clambering of a drum kit yeah, coming in. Yeah, it uh, can, can ruin the ambience. Well, yeah. So <laughs> it's, um, it's definitely something that we would like to avoid wherever possible. Um, it's always possible with every band, you know, they're always happy to arrive earlier if they need to. Um, the important thing yeah. to bear in mind is that normally there is an early arrival fee for this. Yeah, um, okay. It's normally an hourly charge because it will sort of depend. Every wedding is different in regards to their timings and their structure. So, you know, if you have timings in mind, you know, just give us a brief schedule of the day. Say when you expect the wedding breakfast to take place. Let the bands know, um, well, let us know rather, and we can let the bands know, and then they'll be able to advise a, a suitable arrival time, which means that they won't be disrupting everything on the day then. So they're happy to do it. So yeah. we're all happy. That's fantastic. Um, so, uh, when people go through booking a band, they'll be written on there that the band can play, for example, between you know seven pm and they'll finish at midnight. Yeah. But what if the party ain't gonna stop when it hits midnight? Can the band stay for just that little bit longer, Chris, and rock out for a few more minutes, a couple more songs? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's always the case with with bands; they will be flexible because they know that every every venue has maybe a slightly different license in terms of their kind of cut off point for live music. Um, some venues are later than others, so the band will always be experienced in knowing, you know, that that is an eventuality that can happen. Sure. Um, it's the same principle again with the early arrival. You know, there's a small additional charge, which is normally an hourly charge after midnight. Um, midnight's always going to be the standard time the guys are happy to stay with within their normal quoted fee. Okay. Um, so that's not an issue at all. But if you do want to stay up a bit later, you know the bands they'll be happy to do that as so long as if it's things your are in full swing. They yeah. don't have to like press the off button yeah. as soon as midnight happens. They're not going to kill the music straight away if yeah. they, if you don't want them to. But it is important to have that conversation um, sort of beforehand, just so that the guys are aware. Um, yeah. You know, if it's a case of it's going to be way way into the early hours of the morning, they need um, a heads up. They might have travelled a long a long way as well, or they can get yeah. home that night. Yeah. So yeah. Because although we do try and keep bands as local as as possible to you know the locations where you guys are getting married. You know, often depending on the band that you book, sometimes it can be a couple of hours that they'll need to drive to get there. Um, it's nothing out of the ordinary, but the important thing to bear in mind there is what we don't want is the bands to be, you know, doing long commutes late at night into the early hours. Yeah. Um, so if it is a case of, you know, it's 1, 2 a.m. that you're looking for them to finish, um, just be aware that accommodation might be something that you might need to look into as well, which can be cool. a, a slightly kind of unexpected fee. Um, so if you are thinking about having a, a bit of a late night, do let us know as soon as you can. We can always make you aware of what the actual cost will be for that then. Awesome. So we're not we're not buzzkills. We're no. not going to like end your night at midnight. You can still have fun. Yeah, awesome. definitely. Um, our bands, Chris, they look awesome. They look fantastic. They're always kind of dressed really well and the promo looks great. But yeah. when they turn up on the day, are they able to dress smart and kind of, you know, dress to, you know, to fit with the theme? Yeah, definitely. It, it, it's something that the bands will be flexible with. It's probably a request that they've had before, so it's not something that you should be, you know, sort of scared to ask. You know, always ask the question and we can always speak to the bands to see what they can provide. But yeah. the most important thing that we would stress, um, 
depending on the style of the band, of course, um, most of our rock and pop and indie bands, they're going to be dressed a certain way. You know, it's going to be... Part of their image, isn't it? Yeah, to, to image is a, is a massive part of it. Especially, you know, when you guys are booking the bands, it's those images that you see, and those can often be the things that draw yeah. you in because, you know, they look cool, you know, their kind of style and their, you know, sort of appearance matches the, the music that they do. So would you say, like, often what you see on, on the profiles, what you see from the bands is kind of a good representation of how they're going to look when they turn up on the day yeah. anyway. So if, if you're happy with that kind of thing, then you don't really need to ask any questions. Yeah, about definitely. It. You know, especially if you've got a rock and, a rock and pop band and, you know, they're dressed in, in kind of suits as a visual thing on the night, it can often be a little bit kind of disjointed to sort yeah. of have that. So, you know, having a band with a certain image of a certain style, it kind of makes your, your wedding a bit like, like a gig. And yeah. it's fun for everyone because it's not as, it's not as formal. Um, now, obviously, some venues have you know sort of dress codes. You might have dress codes in mind that you like that, that you like the sort of the entertainers to be able to you know fit within. Yeah. Um, that's not a problem at all. Like I said, we, we are happy to sort of put those requests across to the band, and they'll be happy to, to sort of accommodate for that if you'd like them to. Any occasion to dress up is always fun. Yeah. Why not? Well, Chris, I think that's it, talking yeah. about bands today. Thank you very much for joining us again on Ask Mobile. It's been great. And, uh, of course, if you guys have any questions about anything that we've covered, make sure you use the hashtag Ask Warble or leave a comment down below with any questions. Thank you.